All right, so let's take a little bit closer look at this uh, flight controller and power distribution board combination. Like I've whoops mentioned a few times before, it's from Matek and it's their F405 WMN, which is a, a good basic flight controller for a fixed wing. And apart from the actual flight controller and power distribution board that comes together as a package here, you also get um, a pin header that comes with it as well, which if you're normally flying uh, quadcopters or building quadcopters, you don't see these so much uh, anymore. Four or five years ago, perhaps you did, or maybe if you're building larger quads, you might see them, but pretty common with fixed wing um, where we're using servos and lots of other pin connectors. So what we need to do here uh, in part of getting this ready is to solder on the battery connectors and the ESC connectors. And over here in the front, we'll also connect and use these pin connectors. They're not strictly necessary, but I would like to put them in just for simplicity uh, going forward. Now, to do that, most of the work we're going to be doing is on this bottom of the two boards. So I'm actually going to disconnect it from the bottom and just separate them. So let's just do that quickly. It's just a small Phillips head screwdriver. Put that there. And if we take a look over here on this side, there is a pin connector, which as we pull should come apart. And that's it. Now this is the, or these are, sorry, <laughs> the two parts. This one over here is the power distribution board. And this actually is the flight controller over here. And when they talk about this being an F405, that's because this main chip over here is an F405 chip. We're going to not be talking about this part for a little while right now, so I'm just going to actually put it aside completely. Um, what we are going to be taking a look at right now is this particular board. And this is the power distribution board, where you can see that it actually is rated anywhere from 2 to 6S, which means a LiPo battery from 2 to 6 cells. We can see that we have a place for the batteries to connect, battery plus, the ESC positive, and two large ground pins. In the front, there are five volts grounds. I think they're called five volts. No, they're VX ones, which means it's a variable voltage that can be user determined where we set it once and it will stay at that voltage but what that voltage is, is something that we can set. And there are places for four pins to be connected for servos and, and other things on, of that nature. So what we're going to do to get this ready is we are going to connect the battery and ESC leads to this. And we are going to put this pin connector and solder it in place as well so that we can use um, just straight plugs rather than having to solder everything on all the time. So that will be the process. What I'll need to do now is get my soldering equipment kind of set up and change this a little bit. So we'll see you in a moment once that's ready. So what we're going to do first is um, put in the pin headers here 
And what we'll do is basically take the short, short end of the pins, line them up through all of the holes. Doesn't matter which one as long as they're just all in line. There's no right or wrong pin for any particular hole. Just line them up and then slide that through and make sure, and I'm going to see if I can bring this up nice and close here, um, that when you do the, oh, it's too dark. Oh, I'm not very good at this guy, sorry. That the pins go all the way through and that the plastic is flush with the actual board itself. And when we've done that, what you'll see, uh, I hope this can come through, you'll see that some of the pins actually protrude through. And what we're going to end up doing is just applying a little bit of solder onto each of those pins to secure them in place and create a more secure connection. This is actually a very, very tight friction fit, but the solder will make a just a better, more secure connection into those into those pins. So having done that, put those through, we will get a little bit of help from a set of helping hands. And all I've done is just taken some paper there to, to wrap around and put in between the, the jaws of this board, uh, sorry, between the jaws of the, uh, the helping hand here and the board. Don't want the, there's metal teeth in there and you don't want them to start to bite into the board or cause any kind of damage. So I've just mounted it like that. And now all I need to do is solder through there. And to make that a little bit better, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of raws of this flux to it. And I'm doing this on the side because much like the other glue that I had earlier, the Loctite, this has always been uncooperative and it may be so utterly uncooperative that I can't even use it this time. Well, what do you know about that? Hmm. Okay, well, I think I might be in, uh, in line for a new rosin flux pen here. Not the end of the world. Uh, using the flux, if you can, is a, is a really good thing to do because what it will do is encourage the solder to flow between the pad and the pin that's being put through. The solder will still go, but this just makes it work better. But the flux does not want to flow. That's all right. What we will do instead is use this very thin soldering wire, which actually has the flux built in. Now the way I'm going to do it is just simply touch the pin, put the solder onto the pin, wait for it to melt through, and it will just fill the gap. This can take a moment for the heat to build up. What you want to make sure that you're doing is applying the heat to the pin and the pad and then putting the solder on from the other side. You want to use the heat that's being transferred into the pin and that pad to melt the solder rather than the tip of the soldering iron itself. Too much of a blob, just clean it off. And what you need to do for sure after you've done that is just make sure that you check between each pin and make sure that there hasn't been a solder 
bridge formed between any of the two pins um, on the bottom here. And then we'll pop this off and we'll see that on this side, it's now mounted in very securely. And if we take, for example, a servo, a servo lead, we can now simply plug it in and unplug it rather than having to do soldering every single time we want to add, remove, change, replace a servo or anything else, which is really nice. So now that those pins are in place, we need to prep these four pads here. And all I'm going to do for that is I'm going to put this piece of paper back in here just to help protect the board a bit. All I'm going to do is just pre-tin them. Now again, if this flux pen were working, I would be putting a little bit of flux on here so as to uh, encourage the solder to, uh, to do its job a little bit better. But same thing, we can just heat the pad. This solder I'm using actually has flux in it. And once that starts to warm up, you'll see that the whole pad will start to take the solder. You get a nice clean silver ball of solder on there. Same thing here, heat the pad first and start to add the solder using the heat that's in the pad to melt it rather than the tip of the iron. All you do is use the tip of the iron to do it. You can end up either having nothing go on because the iron just pulls the solder away or you'll end up with a blob like that that isn't actually properly adhered and doesn't make a really great connection. So let's take time and make sure that the actual pad itself heats up. Melt the solder using the heat that's in the pad and it will fill it in and you'll get a nice blob of solder on there. Do the same for the next. And there we are. So those four pads now are ready for where we're going to attach the battery and the ESC leads once we've actually measured them out and uh, got them to the right length and we know we're going to put them properly. So that will be the next part that we need to take care of.